Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, 4 before Diesel viewers. This video is going to be in a little bit more detail. We're doing a, well, we're actually doing a BFE job. If you don't know what that is, it's a big front engine job. That's what we invented that as well, calling it that. And you know what the job is with all the components we replace and, of course, the kit we provide because that's what you asked for. Um, but the main content of this video is going to be covering changing coolant people said so changing coolant you know what what do you what do you do how do you do it whatever so step one what we've done is we've got a cold engine we've removed the filler cap at the i call that a header tank it heads up the radio it's up high it's where you fill it that's the header tank okay um probably officially maybe called something else on this make and model but that's what i call it if i talk about the header tank Call it the overflow bottle if you want, but it doesn't really overflow, does it? You know, I mean, it can if you overfill it, but anyway, right? So, we've got other videos probably in full detail. We've got a bit of detail on our YouTube channel, but a lot of private videos that are available, um, you know, in our uh, you know, the VIP group. So, if you buy that kit, you know, the BFE kit, water pump, drive belts, bearings, idle tension, a cam seal timing up, all the stuff you need to make and do and complete a BFE job. Um, yeah, get it. Don't forget to join the VIP group, right? It's on Facebook in case you missed that part as well. You don't have to be on Facebook. I've said this in other videos, right? You don't have to be on there making real friends and using your real name and whatever. It's just for the information. And we've got the best groups on the internet. Not because I said so, because that's what the people said. So, um, coolant, cap off. Now, this is a LC120, 120 Prado, right? Uh, on this one, the drain plug for the radiator is at the passenger side down the bottom. You can see it straight down there, right? See that white plug right in the middle of the picture? I'm not going to get down on my hands and knees in the dirt, whatever, right? So you just, you can take the plug out or you can back it off. You can back it off a few turns. Enough is, you don't have to do it up super tight. It's an O-ring sealing it when you put it back in. So maximum information, guys, right? You can take it right out, right? Don't lose it. Have a look at it, you'll see the O-ring. Once the O-ring goes into the tube, that's what seals. And I've never seen one leak, so just keep it clean and put it back in. If you take it right out, then it'll coolant will come out faster and it'll spew out backwards and all that. So just have your drone tray there because you're meant to catch that sort of thing and dispose of it environmentally, you know. Um, for us, our local recycling facility takes oil uh, for free and our coolant is in with the oil and, you know, the people that recycle the oil, they can sort it out later. They don't like it, but whatever right whatever you know they get to sort it out dispose of it thank you very much anyway not too much coolant in there anyway but you know um so be environmentally friendly because that's important for everyone as well um we're going to include a few other tips and information on the bfe job in this video so stay tuned and then towards the end we will go through the procedure we use, what works really well, and I'm not saying we haven't included in other videos, but I'm focusing on showing you how to bleed the cooling system. So later on in this video, so the other thing you would normally do, if you're doing a straight coolant change and you're not, see so for us we're taking the water pump off and things that are going to let all the coolant out of the block really well. If you're not doing that, there is a um, block drain plug, it's hard to see. I'm going to, I can see it from where I am now right I can see it right so I'm going to point it out to you but it's hard to see so you know what angle I'm basically directly this part of the camera that bit right there you is directly above the pump up the fuel button on the 120 and if you look straight in right down here between the oil filter and that gray plug you'll see on the side of the block there's this gray thing right we're going to call it a gray thing see that gray thing that's actually your oil cooler that gray thing there and it goes along part of that is it goes it's one assembly all the way includes what your oil filter mounts on so it's actually built into that i haven't really analyzed it that closely before but yeah it's built into that because your oil cooler there's coolant running in behind it that's what cools your oil believe it or not so yes your engine oil is getting cooled by coolant and of course warmed up by coolant too just a bit like the oil going in the radiator from the transmission without going off topic too much There's a little plug down there, right? You'll have to locate it. Okay. What I can tell you is it's brass going into Alloy, it's got a tapered seat on it. It's a 10 mil. I use a quarter drive with about a six inch extension 
And if you've got a wobble socket extension, that's even better. And just leave it loose so it makes it a bit easier. But you can get in there without a wobble socket. Um, basically what you want to do is back it off about one to one and a half turns and you'll see the flow coming out. There's a little tube there. There's no, it's a metal pipe. There's no tube on it. You don't need a tube on it. It's just going to leak out just like the one on the radiator is going to leak out, right? So we don't recommend flushing. See this? I mean, you won't see it. Now I showed you earlier in the video. See, it's nice and red and clean. That's genuine Toyota coolant and quality materials used in the manufacture of these vehicles. You shouldn't need to flush it unless some fool has come along and put the wrong coolant or a coolant mix in there. If you do, then rip off every hose and everything and give it a good flush out and try and get all the water out. Put cleaners through it, whatever you need to do. I can't include that in this video. And um, you might want to do a couple of coolant changes like, you know, in six months, do it again. Because the heat and the flow, you never, once you introduce water, you're not going to get it all out. That's the problem. So you need to do it. So that's why we recommend drop it, right, and refill it. Okay, let it drain properly. No need to introduce water and flush anything, it's clean. When it's new, it might be okay the first time to do it in five or seven years. They recommend 160k. You know, we bring the BFE. Every 150k is what ours gets done. But once you get to the second one, 150 onwards, I recommend a coolant change at least in between or every two to three years, okay? Because everything's not new anymore. You didn't get all the coolant out. You're only gonna get 80%. It's good enough, but you need to do it regularly to keep it kind of flushing, if you know what I mean. I've said it before in other videos, on our vehicles, I look for excuses to drop the coolant. If I go, oh, look, you know, there's a, I don't know, I'm gonna replace this hose. Bang, I'm dropping the whole lot. It's getting a coolant flush. I'm not just quickly changing the hose and topping it up. No, no, that's an excuse to drop the coolant. If I go, oh, I'm getting a P0400, you know, I've got to pull these things off, whatever, or something, I'm gonna take a hose off here to get off that. Basically, uh, Mate, you know, uh, excuse to drop the coolant. Anyway, let's show you a few other little tips here and there throughout this video, and then we'll get to bleeding the cooling system properly towards the end. And if you didn't like because I'm talking too much, bad luck because other people want the information. Lovely sunny day out here for doing a BFE job. So get all the front stripped down. Already changed the water pump to seal up that block so the coolant came out there. The last of it, if you know what I mean. Uh, more or less. Um, we're going to give this all a good clean up in here and also here all part of the BFE job if you've seen our other videos or you're watching our channel um, you'll see a lot of debris oh, so this is I'm not going to show you how we do it it's in other videos but basically with a pressure washer from in behind this way push it back through the way it came and it just the amount of stuff that flows out the front here you'd be amazed and when you look through here you can't see at the moment right so it'll be a before and after i'm going to clean it up now and i'll show you afterwards right, doesn't this look better after a bit of a clean now you can't get it perfect but i'll tell you what it's a good 98 percent even the whole front of the engine right now another little tip i want to show you is there's a hose that comes off the bottom of the header tank that normally sits about here and there's some clamps you've got to undo again this is not the whole job detail but it runs onto that, see that fitting down, I'm pointing at it right there, right? See that one there? The reason we take that off temporarily is to let all the coolant out at the lowest point at the front there, and that's what it does. I reckon probably about another litre comes out, but anyway, that is the lowest point at the front there to drop all the coolant out. Everything's nice and clean now, so we've washed it, we've blown it dry. Now, the, the reason we do this here, you know, we're out in the nice sunny, and it's going to dry it all up, make sure it's all dry, and we're going to get that those um, timing belt components and timing belt back on at the moment. There's the timing belt mark, in case you wanted to know about that. The main one there, you can see the mark on the front. We've got a little blue mark there, and the arrow is on the cover at the back. More detail in other videos. We're going to show you how to bleed the cooling system soon, but let's just take a look. Oh, it's pretty. You can't see through anyway. You can see it's clean now. You can see through it, right? It's hard for you to see. It's hard to get the camera down the right spot. But I can tell you that massive amounts of stuff came out of there. Just massive. We spray a bit of degreaser on it, let it soak a little bit, and then just push it all. And you can see no damage. No, there's no damage from the pressure washer pushing on the back here. You just got to keep your distance a few inches depending on your pressure washer. You need to get to know that. Let's see if we can see through it this way. It might work better. Might not too. 
Just going to move it around. No, I think we need some light or something on the other side. We haven't got light on either side. Sometimes you can see how clear anyway, it is or whatever. We're getting it back together nice and clean. You can see the time belts on. If you do want to purchase one of these big front engine kits, a lot of people are asking, oh, so how do I buy your parts? How do I buy your kits? There's a playlist, right, on our YouTube channel called How to Buy My Kits. Watch all those videos. There's a few different ones there on all the different products and the newer videos will be updated and added to that list. Let me know if you have any trouble if finding that in the comments. Um, but it's, yeah, shoot me a text message Monday mornings, 8 a.m. Melbourne time. You know, with your name, your vehicle, and what you need. The BFE kit's currently 715 to your door. That's the water pump. That's the time belt, the idler, the tensioner, the cam seal, the uh, main drive belt, all the bearings that go in these pulleys, whatever, all genuine OEM. The whole kit, express post, delivered to your door, right? So, 715. Uh, and then you get access to the more detailed videos. This is a job you do once every 150,000 Ks. You might as well get it clean, get it right, take your time, get it right the first time. And it's all about being very careful about who you take your vehicle to. So if you're into doing stuff yourself, good on you, because there's not enough people that can do things right. But if you want it done right and you're not into doing it yourself, again, once you purchase that kit, make contact and pay for that, you get in the VIP group, you can find some of our workshop partners, or just shoot me another text saying, hey, I'm in this area, who have you got? And we may or may not have someone in your area. You may have to travel, but it's every 150,000 Ks, so probably worthwhile. So it's uh, all back together. You can see the plug down the bottom's in, of course. Don't forget, yeah, you know, see that wing nut there, right? Don't forget that, or you'll be pouring the coolant in the top here, and it'll be going straight back out the other end. Of course, the hose down the bottom, everything's back together. I'm not showing you that in this video. Now it's how to bleed the cooling system, okay? This is what we do. Now understand that there's a thermostat in there, and when you pull the coolant in, it's only going to kind of like fill up half the engine. It needs to bleed through that thermostat hole slowly. Or you need to fill it up to a certain point so that this bottle overflows back out of that hole. So you take this plug out, and in the Prados and the Hiluxes and every vehicle, it's slightly different. But in this 120 Prado, LC120, right, similar to all the other 1KDs as well, you'll find a plug somewhere, sometimes on top of the radiator. That's out, so that the air, you know. Now, this is what I do. Right, I just want to show you. So you've got full and low on the thing. It's hard to see because you've got the dual battery here. But there's also another mark on the side that says B. And it needs to be above that to bleed it because what's happening now, we've poured in five litres and it's not going down anymore. Some people might want to start the engine. I don't like starting the engine until it takes... I've said this in other videos, so we have covered this in other videos, but I wanted to make one specific to bleeding the cooling system and call it how to bleed the cooling system, right? What I'm going to do now... I've got the balance from another job in a bottle. There's, there's eight lit, just over eight litres in total. So I'm going to slowly pour in another three. And I'm not going to bore you and hold the camera here while I'm doing it. But I'm going to keep pouring this in slowly. And I'm going to overfill it. I'm going to fill it right up to the top here. Not even the B line. Right to the top until it takes at least eight litres. Because I know that it's going to need about eight litres. Once you've got eight litres in and you see no movement, you're keeping it up above the B line, right? The other thing you can do is also park the vehicle so the right hand front wheel's up a little bit. So this is definitely the highest point, if you know what I mean. In my opinion, don't start the engine until it's taken at least seven or eight litres, depending how much you've drained out, that sort of thing, right? So we're going to put in eight, and then I'll come back to you. So I'm going to put in another three litres slowly. Okay, so literally this is two to three minutes later. I've just poured another. So we had a full five litre container went in first. And this container, so they've got a marker on it. One, two, three, had just over three. So I poured in just over eight litres so far. And you can see it's over full. At this point, I'm not worried about it being over full, okay? I'll just, you're not gonna really cook these engines or anything. They, they're just so resilient, really. But get eight litres into it. If you've done the proper drain, taking that lower hose off, we do. So four litres, sorry, three litres has gone in and it was, I was pouring, it was keeping it right to the top, pouring really slowly. And it's going to keep slowly draining down, right? I want to see it, I want to keep it up to the B line, if you know what I mean. Because once it's above the B line and nothing, there's a B on the bottle. You can't see it with this one because of the battery, right? But the Hiluxes have it. I just fill the bottles up. You're not going to hurt anything by overfilling it. What's going to happen if it's over full? It's going to push the excess out. You're going to waste coolant, that's all. You're going to waste a little bit. Generally, you buy yourself two 10-litre bottles, right? This is the stuff we use on the 1KDs, right? If everyone uses genuine, 
super long life cool and it's pre-mixed you can't have any problems it's good quality stuff you see how long it lasts it stays clean it's only about 35 bucks a bottle or something so about 70 or 80 bucks or something you're going to get the 10 liters is should be all you need um right don't worry about what the books say whatever i'm telling you this is what happens mate they take about eight to ten liters if you somehow need over 10 liters good luck you buy another one use it and keep it for next time doesn't matter right but I, look i've never I, that i can think of it's always about close to you know eight to ten liters depending and i'm not too worried about getting that last 10 20 percent out we recommend doing the coolant flush right that's drop the plugs as discussed earlier in the video every couple of years on older vehicles it's cheap insurance that sort of money to look after think about the components right radiators hoses welsh plugs heater cores you know there's just so many components it protects it's a no-brainer anyway see this see how it's staying above the seam that means it's above the b-line it's probably not draining down anymore so it is safe to start the engine and what we do we just let it idle or some slight revs a thousand fifteen hundred you don't need to get it hot too quick but as long as you put this amount of coolant in you can bring get a little bit of revs 1500 warm it up to the normal coolant temperature of 83 degrees then you know the thermostat's open that's going to get it flowing and let most of the air out i suggest you leave it a little bit over full see on the 120 you can see the full line down there i like to bring them up to the seam a little bit extra in case there's any air in there once it's up to normal operating temperature and it doesn't seem to be taking any more put your caps on then go for a drive just drive it nicely keep an eye on the temperature if you've got a scan gauge or scan tool where you can just watch it going 83 4 5 6 7 and it opens and it goes back down get that cycling a few times what i like to do then is bring it back and park it then get on to another job then i'll go back out to it an hour later while it's cold or cooled down or i can safely take the caps off and i'm going to top it up to full cold then i'm going to put the caps on then i'm going to go for a drive again make sure it get it warm five minute drive i'm going to come back and park it and get back onto another job come out an hour later i'm going to pop the bonnet and it's going to be spot on and then i'm going to tell the client i'm going to say something we dropped all the coolant out of the engine the whole block and everything there can be a few airlocks in there it's not usually going to happen but if it does we can either top it up a little bit on the next visit or pop by again or you can add a little bit yourself or you can even it's such a small amount you can add water if you don't like adding the water it depends where you are with the water quality but that's basically the simplicity of bleeding the cooling system they're not a complicated thing they don't usually get airlocks where they spray coolant and stuff everywhere like all these other crappy some of these i'm not going to go through naming other brands and but there's some that are a real headache you can see it's full so it's over full so what it's going to do when there's too much in there it's going to push it out past the cap and out this it may make some mess just same as i've made a little bit of mess filling some pouring it in there's a bit there so cap's about to go on now all right well it's not going to go on i'm going to start the engine first make sure the flow get it up the temp then the cap's going to go on. we're going to go for a drive and it may make some mess pushing out the excess if you don't like the idea of that go for a drive come back and if it's over full too much you're not happy then get a syringe get some out or get a you know clear tube where you can soften a little bit out whatever the case may be however you want to do it and set it to the right level but i suggest leaving a little bit extra there because they do always seem to drop down that's why i like on the 120 filling it up to the seam the hilux you'll see the full line is below the seam I like to bring it up a little bit above the seam, you know, a good 60% full that bottle there near the B line or so. The B, you'll see what I mean when you look at your bottles, guys. Find the B. Anyway, that's it for this video. I'm sure we've done heaps of detail. We've mentioned it in other videos, but some people were saying, have you got a video on changing the coolant? So this was meant to be that, how to change it and how to bleed the cooling system. That's it, basically, all right? Thanks for watching. Don't over tighten these. They just seal by an O-ring. The cap, it's got a little locating position there. When it clicks into there, that's it. You don't need to keep turning it. Um, we don't see problems with caps. You don't need to replace it usually either. We're out here, guys. If you got something out of that and it was helpful, please remember to give us the thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, turn the bell on and just sit tight for that next awesome bit of information to come along. Thanks for watching. See ya.